All right, play it forward with Shaquita Smith, um, writer, director of Dick Control. Shaquita, yeah. thank you for being on the show. Thanks for having me. Uh, pleasure. Would you like to introduce yourself or the movie in any way prior to starting? Sure. So um, I'm Shaquita Smith. Uh, my film is Dick Control. Uh, it's a, a movie about a a rapper who disrespects a woman, a one night stand that he has with this woman, and she ends up being a witch. So she puts a curse on his penis that um, it can't get hard until he learns how to respect women. So um, it kind of ruins his life, and he has to learn how to respect women before he's able to use his magic wand again. There you have it. Um, it was very cute, funny movie. Um, <laughs> And it's a very light take on an incredibly dark, um, painful subject yeah. that is going on, you know, across the world, mm -hmm. uh, black, white, yellow, red, whatever. Yeah. So um, the first question of the show is, where did that germinal seed, right, live in you to decide to say, okay, I'm going to address this topic and then how did it you know where did it flourish really mm. where did it come from in your life experience um I used to intern with Def Jam back when I was in college and so I was always around the artists when they would come in town so we would go to do autograph signings together or to the radio station together and so I got to see how they treated the women around them wow some of the rappers actually travel with the women they bring like they're they're women for the night, I guess, or women of the night. <laughs> so um, I don't know, one time like a rapper mistaken me, he mistook me for a um, one of those girls. He thought I was there to be a hoe. And I was just like, I'm with you guys. I'm, I'm with, the, with the record company. I'm what are you talking yeah. about? And so that kind of gave me the, that always stayed with me. And so um, when I came to, to think of doing a film, I had this idea about a rapper. I think it was, I'm not sure it was, it wasn't exactly what this is, um, what Dead Control became, but it was like a little drum of an idea of like, okay, let's address what the, how the rappers treat women. And so um, I, like, I think it was last, not last year, the year before last, uh, that summer, um, I was writing a short, and I was just like, I'm gonna write this as a short. And um, just looking at what was happening with like Meg Thee Stallion and Tory Lanez and just kind of that whole situation and just like, women are really treated like crap, like in this industry. And so that whole thing from college kind of came back to me. And I was like, well, let me put this in a story. I specialize in writing comedy, mostly um, in my writing career. So I always try to put some levity to it and put a little bit more, add the nuance and all, like you say, the dark subject, but make it a little bit light so it's more pal palatable. Um, so people can kind of accept it and like laugh at it, but they're still thinking at the same time, like, oh, wow, you know, that's funny, but not really. <laughs> it's kind of messed up. So um, I, I specialized in kind of doing that. Like I did a story like 10 years ago this month, actually, uh, called The Takeover, which is kind of similar to that. It, it dealt with the race with um, black women and black men and black men are dating white women in L.A. and they won't pay attention to the, to the black women. And so it was a, another kind of touchy subject, uh, but I made it lighthearted and fun and it went viral on um, YouTube, actually, that year. It's like 2013. So that's kind of my, my thing. I like to like take serious subjects and serious topics and kind of add a little bit of, of oh, a, sugar, a spoonful of sugar to help the medicine go yeah, down. Yeah, so I kind yeah. of do that with my films yeah. um, because I feel like comedy is healing um, to a lot of people. And then it's also a way to get messages out there. So it's like, yeah. if you have the comedy on top of that and they kind of laugh, but they're still getting the, the deeper meaning of behind the story. So like, that's, that's my thing. Yeah, no, that's great. I mean, you know, one of the things that you have said that resonates and, you know, I've talked to upwards of about 100 filmmakers doing the show now yeah. and healing is just you know it's a, a theme that comes again and again and again it's so built into the art you know the yeah. art process what is art you know filmmaking is this art process and oftentimes yeah. that kind of gets lost in the making of it but yeah. it originates there and certainly should end and you know contain that throughout but I think that's a really great approach um you know, to introduce those themes in a way that people can talk about them, and especially that mm -hmm. they're so hard to touch. And, you know, kind of to move into that second question to play it forward, like the message around the movie. I mean, there's clearly like a very, you know, that surface message of misogyny and the the effects that it has. But, you know, with the, she puts a curse on him. He is uh, emasculated. and. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, he he wakes up, right? 
Yeah. And I think, you know, there is really the the kind of the kernel of the idea um, to me with the point being that the pain that you inflict on others is also self-inflicted, right? Yeah. You can't get away with inflicting pain on others and not feel it. It catches yeah. up to you, you yes, know, at does. some point. And I think in this particular situation, you know, if we made an hour and a half feature of dick control and yeah. had some more time to go into like the nuance of how that works, right? Because here we have, you know, kind of magic spell. He loses it. Yeah. He, he, he's a good boy. He gets it back. But mm -hmm. um, what about like in terms of that not being able to get away with pain or the message of the movie, like that real message of the movie that you want people to get, whether it's as you made the movie or as you see it as a viewer now, what is that message that you see the movie saying? Well, uh, the message for me is just kind of being careful how you treat people. Because especially there's a lot of men who go around treating women any kind of way and thinking that they can just walk away and get away with it. And it's just like, no, like you mess or you might mess with the wrong woman. And then in his case, uh, Ty's case, he messed with the wrong woman. It's like he had been sleeping with all these women. He had had them on speed dial. He's calling them over, trying to sleep with them or whatever. But it's just like there's that one woman that may come along. You never know who you're sleeping with that can mess you up. And it's just like, I don't think a lot of men realize that. So a lot of them end up in situations where it's either like a rape or something, or it's either a, she calls it a rape, or it's like someone gets pregnant, you know, that you don't want a kid with this this lady or whatever. You, you don't really care about her like that. But it's just like, okay, why are you putting yourself in that situation to end up that way? And so I think in the feature film, we will explore more of the psychology behind why he's sleeping with all these women. Because that's, that's one of the things I want to explore, is just some of these rappers, like, what is that? Why Why are you sleeping with all these women? Like, what are you trying to prove? Because usually people that do that are trying to prove something. Um, I also want in the story just to kind of explore the whole thing with the Black Witch. <laughs> um, I really like her. I really want to kind of show um, the whole thing of uh, the crystals and just kind of that whole lifestyle of like some, some women live that lifestyle. I'm also thinking it could be funny to kind of have women coming to her <laughs> to try to help help her <laughs> have her help them with their men or whatever um but yeah i'm like i really want to go behind the psychology because for me in like a feature film like like that character uh, ty richard is going to like to eastern medicine and the buddhist monks and trying to right. get his dick back and just yeah. like yeah. he's going to the extremes i mean just like show like him not having sex is ruining his rap career so he got go, like he's traveling to germany you can't sleep with any women they're disappointed the groupies are disappointed or whatever so it's just like just kind of showing how high on the totem pole sex is for these rappers and their image. And what if you take that away? Like how far, how far will they fall? So um, yeah. I want to explore that through this film and make it funny, but still, like you say, make a nuance and make it a really deep type of story because I've like, I feel like it's not a dress. I mean, rappers yeah. go out yeah. here and do all kinds, even like the Tory Lane situation after the court case and stuff, and people are still taking up for him and not wanting him to take accountability for shooting a woman. And it's just like, what is that about? So like those things I want to explore in the film, and I don't know if you've seen like there's this whole manosphere of these men on there like spewing stuff on on social on YouTube or whatever about women and all this yeah. other stuff like they got Andrew Tate they got arrested so that's like this whole industry of like men that are like talking on podcasts or whatever and talking down about women mm -hmm. and so I want to kind of address that too in this in this film maybe he's like listening to one of these guys or whatever and that's kind of why his thought process is the way because a lot of times men don't listen to women they listen to other men so if the other men are telling you right. fuck shit. <laughs> <laughs> then that's what you walk around believing. So, um, so yeah, I want to kind of put that in the film. I, I think it'll be funny. I think it'll be edgy. Um, and right now, it's just like I'm looking for the right production company to do it with and who's interested. Um, we've won, I think, four. We won four awards so far. Um, with the, and I didn't set out to win awards. I really just set out to try to get a feature film made of this uh, 14, 15-minute uh, short film. But um, the awards help, hopefully. It's going to help sure. us walk in the door yeah. and um, be able to get something out of it. Well, um, definitely um, wish you well with that. You know, what, what will become of it is what will met, be meant to yes. be. So I'm sure, yes. um, you know, all good things. Either way, you know, it's a huge accomplishment just to make it and mm -hmm. to get it out there and get, you know, people um, responding to it. So yeah. congratulations on that. Thank um, you. you know, as you're speaking, you know, be, you said, be careful on how you treat people, you know. And to me, it's kind of, I, I heard that for sure. And I'm also mm -hmm. thinking, be careful of how you treat yourself. Yeah. You know, 
because again that message that i'm seeing from the movies what you put out comes back right yes and and you know the connection the unity of all of us you know as human beings is there in one way or another and um at least in my belief and um you know but it's it's interesting how both sides have culpability right there are men yeah. there are women there are mothers yeah. and there's fathers right it's a family yeah. thing and there's mm -hmm. a generational thing going on yes right and it's been happening for a long long time before rap and you know mm -hmm. rock and roll and so it's like um now it's just very in your face with you know the level of acceptability that has mm -hmm. come uh become of it's pretty easy to brag about it you know you don't mm -hmm. have to do it at the bar I know. um yeah you can just pool hall. Kind of post right or pool hall yeah. whatever so um you know i guess my question is how do how do we all mature to the next level? women men parents mm -hmm. you know children yeah how do we mature uh i would say therapy yeah there you have it. <laughs> That's yeah. probably the easiest way. And it's not just like therapy, some magical place you go to and you come out fixed or something. Right. It's just that, yeah. like you're saying, like you want to be good to yourself. If you want to be good to yourself, then you're trying to be your best self, I would yeah. believe. Yeah. So if you're going to therapy and learning about yourself and your self-awareness and your self-worth, then you come out of the situation where there's just things that you won't accept or there's things that you won't do. So like you said, like this guy's like kind of hurting himself. It's like, okay, why is he doing that? But maybe if he went to therapy and found out like his self-awareness, his self-realization, he'd be like, okay, I'm doing this because I'm mad at my father. I'm doing this because I'm mad at my mother or something like that. Then you kind of take control of the situation and you're just like, okay, I know this about myself. I'm not going to put myself in those situations because it's going to end up bad or I'm hurting myself. Let me stop hurting myself because I think a lot of us are self-sabotagers. Um, and so, yeah, me going, I go to therapy. <laughs> so me going to therapy kind of like... Um, opens my eyes to a lot of things about myself. It's one of the uh, biggest forms of self-care that I do, especially being in this industry. I don't see how people do it without therapy because like, it's, sure. it's, it's yeah. crazy out here in sure. LA and Hollywood. Sure. Uh, so yeah, sure. so it's like, I feel like it's a self-care thing that everybody should do to try to figure yeah. out, you know, what it is that they can do better for themselves, how they can do yeah. better by themselves. Yeah. Um, yeah. And a lot of people don't even care to to do that they're hiding from their emotions they don't have emotions or they're savage like they say in the music or whatever and it's just like that's not healthy that's not good that's not going to end well and life is too short to be walking around feeling like you're trying to get back at somebody or you're trying to like punish somebody because something that happened to you so um yeah i think that's probably what i would say that's probably I'll probably incorporate therapy somewhere in the film oh, that'd be <laughs> at funny. some point. That'd be I'm sure he'll funny. end up there. So like, Doctor, that'd be very funny. Can you help me? <laughs> yeah, that'd be very funny. Um, that's a great idea. It really is. Um, you know, it's so true. Self-awareness and, you know, the, the bringing that self-healing into the context of this movie you know, yeah. you see a man going after a desire that's not gratifying because he's got to repeat it and repeat it and repeat it and repeat yeah. it. And women, too, subjugating oh. themselves to yeah. this um, treatment. Mm -hmm. So because of their own need for validation. So yep. there's this this button people are pressing, but it's not it's not doing it right. It's just working mm -hmm. temporary. Yeah. So, um, you know, awareness. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, you have no, a thought? Like... Nothing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, thank you for that, Jaquita. Um, then the last question is since making the film, how have you been changed as a person? Oh wow, how have I been changed? Um, I think the film was validating for me to know that other people feel this way. They they want they they are getting something from the film. After the movie, after every screening we have, this is why I don't understand where we've gotten into a lot of festivals, but there's still a lot more festivals I feel like we should be in with the subject matter and how we handled it and just the, the look of the film and all the things that we did. We shot this in one day. Um, wow. So it's like, I, after, the, after the screenings that we, the film festivals that we do get in that I've attended and that my friends have attended as well, it's just like there's a lift of the audience. I mean, you've been to festivals and you've seen some of the movies are just kind of like, cut slit your wrist type of sad or whatever and sometimes we end up in those blocks or whatever because i mean comedy is not really doesn't really do that well in film festivals especially serious ones unless it's a comedy film festival the serious ones are more looking for oscar bait types of films or whatever so the ones that we do get in that have that 
we kind of end up usually in some weird place in the block. <laughs> they usually put us in the middle, actually. It's usually either at the middle or at the end. But I'm like, I can, I'll sit there and watch the audience and kind of see how they respond to the film. And so it's just been really cool to kind of see them like, oh, and I hear like, I can hear people in the back, oh, this is a really good movie. Like, just like hearing that. And, and afterwards, they all kind of descend upon me to ask me like questions about it. And like, um, they have so many good things to say about it. And they, they got certain jokes or whatever. Or maybe they watched it like the, um, the, the guy who's over the Sherman Oaks Film Festival was like, I think it was like his third time watching it at the festival. He interviewed my um two of my actors. And he was saying like, I didn't, the female, he said female, I didn't get it the first time. I, the first two times I saw it, but the third time I caught it, there's a lot of little nuances in there that you'll miss or whatever, maybe in a theater. But um, so yeah, so it's, it's been really cool to kind of see that other people see it as well. It's not just me, <laughs> like it's a misogyny and they see like, um, they, they found comedy in it. They found, um, they related to some of the characters um, and they, they just, yeah, I saw the depth that I was trying to, I was going for. I love it when there's kind of like, I feel, I feel like I'm a smart filmmaker. So it's cool to get in front of a, an audience that picks up on the little things that I put in there. So I put little Easter eggs throughout all my my stuff. So when they pick up on those little things, it's just like, oh, okay. So they, they got that. Um, so that's been the biggest thing for me is just kind of feeling validated. And because I put my own money up for this project. So it was just like, it, was this the right idea? <laughs> <laughs> you know, after you finish shooting it, it's like, I spent a lot of money on this. And is this going to work? You know, I really do want to do this as a, as a feature film. And I feel like the common social commentary it's going to have and I feel like it'll make an impact. And that's one thing that I, as a filmmaker, want to do more than anything. Like, I don't really care about awards or Oscars. I only care about them as much as they can help me. <laughs> anything else is just like, ah, oh, it's cool. We got an award. Nice. Um, but my thing is the social commentary and making an impact. Like there are films like Star Wars, like Coming to America, um, films or, or shows like Dave Chappelle, Chappelle Show. There are things from those movies and those shows that are still in the American lexicon, to, that, to the world's lexicon at this moment. So it's just like, I want to do a film that people remember stuff from and that people utilize in their everyday life or that the, the stories are, they they may have learned a lesson or whatever to kind of apply that to their lives. So um, that's always been my goal um, in this whole a filmmaking um, process of, of coming to this industry because I, I had a choice. It was either go to the music industry or come to Hollywood and write. And I decided to come to LA instead of New York. So plus they have rats in New York. I mean, you guys know, so <laughs> it's just Dude. scary. Yeah, they want scary, scary place. <laughs> yeah. Um, I hear you. My wife would definitely sympathize with you. Um, mm -hmm. What is it in you that has been validated? Um, Just the not feeling alone in my thoughts like I mean I have girlfriends that I can talk to about it I have guy friends that kind of see what I see but it's just there's nothing like having the platform to show what's going on in your mind or to show to, to show a mirror to society it's kind of oh, I feel like it's my my um my purpose is to kind of put a mirror up that's what I think our artists are supposed to do is to look at society and it's like okay let me find an entertaining way to show them how they look and so that's what this was to show rappers how they look like they can, they'll, they'll laugh at it. I'm sure there's all kinds of dick jokes in there or whatever they'll laugh at, but hopefully they can, they get the deeper message and they walk away from it like, okay, maybe it, what am I doing? <laughs> that's my thing. That's what, that's what does it for me is to be able to put that message out there and for it to land. Um, that's what it is for me. I'm like, I used to be an educator. I used to be a teacher. And so I kind of left there because it was just like, there's a bigger platform for me to teach. There's a bigger platform for me to put these lessons that I learned in therapy or wherever else into a story form and um, touch somebody else that may be going through the same thing. And I remember I was um, talking to this doctor, I think it was an oncologist maybe, and he wanted to be a screenwriter. So he thought about going to school for screenwriting and I was going to go to school for to be a pediatrician. So we were talking about that and he was just like, never let anyone um, discount what you do. Like what you do as a writer and as putting making films is like one of the most healing processes for a lot of people. Like growing up or whatever, you can be in the worst situation, but watching a movie can lift your day or make your day better or make your life better. Um, so I've, ever since hearing that from oncologists who are de dealing with people that are going through life changing um, experiences, it's just like I always knew it, but it was like that was even more validating that what I'm doing is um, is impactful, is powerful. So. Yeah, that's what validates it for me is that I'm doing something that's touching people and that's making people think and maybe that and that's leaving behind a legacy because these films will be around long after I'm gone. So that's my sure. thing. Sure. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. 
Thank you, Shaquita Smith, filmmaker, writer, director. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. No Thank doubt, you. continued success for sure. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, till next time, everybody. Play it forward.